Hi, this is my first effort at working with an Adreno microcontroller, more specifically the Leonardo iteration of it, and I thought it might be worth sharing some of uh, the experience that I had with it. Start, let me say what you're looking at are two bundles that I bought off of eBay. I think they were both about $25 a piece. One bundle consisted of the a Leonardo in the display, and I think it also had a breadboard uh, piece. And then the second part had most of the mechanical parts, and it also included the dual H bridge. And here's a view of the undercarriage of the unit. Not included are the batteries that you see, but otherwise everything else came with the mechanical bundle. In my book, for the money, both the packages represent great value. The only issue I've had with what I've got in this random sample of one was one of the encoder wheels uh, wasn't correctly cut. And because of that, as the encoder wheel rotates, it appears to wobble from side to side. Right now, that's not a problem because, as you see, I don't have the electronics for the encoders. One item not included in the two eBay bundles is the IR module you see here. It's a D GP2D15. It's something I had gotten six or seven years ago for another project but never used. From a user point of view, it consists of three leads, a ground, plus 5 volts and a sensor output. And the way it works is anything beyond 8 or 9 inches it can't see. Anything less than that, the sense lead goes high. If I were to do this project over again, I'd probably do away with the 4-cell battery pack and replace it with a 7.4-volt LiPo battery. As it stands now, after 4 or 5 minutes running with this 4-cell pack, the unit's uh, motor performance is dropped off fairly significantly. So let me show you how this is set up to run. You turn it on and the display prompts you to select a run mode. Right now there's only two legitimate choices. Here I'm selecting what I call the figure eight pattern. The microcontroller goes into a four second down count giving time to get away from it and then in the figure eight mode what it does is most motors accelerate uh, up to a point and then one motor continues to accelerate up to full power while the other motor is back down to a minimal value. The motor that's been accelerated to full power is then decremented down to the minimal power of the inboard motor and then the process repeats over again this time reversing which motor receives full power. So it causes the unit to either spiral in a, a left hand or right hand circular motion. And then the, uh, when the sensor picks up or detects uh, an object that's within eight or nine inches, it jumps in and reverses both motors and uh, causes it to, to uh, change direction depending on which direction it's rotating at the time. Um, that the object was detected. Well that was one run, let's do it again. In this case, the power cord's not a problem. However, the shop vac hose traps it. Not sure if that's because it's black or is it because the IR beam went under it. So let's start it again and see what it does this time. While we're watching it run, let me say this about the Arduino GUI interface. It's one of the best I've ever used. You program the Arduino in a form of C, which by itself can be a challenge to do some simple things. But the Arduino GUI bundles a bunch of libraries that really simplify 
uh, setting up communications to the uh, I.O. pin. And you can download at the same SMART website additional libraries to support the display. The one knock there is that uh, the libraries are a little out of date and once you get them loaded you'll need to go in and edit them to bring them up to date with the current uh, calls or libraries that the Adrena now supports. Well that about covers it for me right now. Thanks for watching and good luck with your next project.